Hello my zesty people and uh, good afternoon for the East Coasters, good evening for people in the Philippines and good morning to those in the West Coast. So today we're going to be talking about Git flows uh, for headless website development. We're going to share pretty much the way we develop our website to hopefully give you insight to organize your Git uh, flows for when you're working on your headless projects. Uh, I'm also going to share, you know, how we've done it also for, you know, application building and, but generally for website building, I think they're, they're two very different uh, functions and they both can, you know, have their different Git workflows applied. Um, so lo and behold, get started and I'll be checking chat. So anybody in the chat has any questions or comments about how things are set up, uh, happy to answer questions. Um, so. For this particular lecture, we're gonna I'm gonna use Figma and show you the examples of how, and I'm gonna represent these boxes for branches. So, if you're not familiar with Git, Git is a code repository system that allows you to create branches of code. <clears throat> so one branch of code could have a different set of code than another branch of code, and then you can merge that code into another branch to keep things consistent. Um, the purpose of this is so that people can work independently of each other without overwriting code. Uh, which is extremely valuable. So that's what Git is. Um, Git has a couple of popular websites for managing this and like creating community around your Git repositories. Uh, that is GitHub and there's Git uh, Bitbucket uh, and there's Git Labs. So we use GitHub. I'm going to use our public repository called the website uh, to show an example of how we have our particular branches set up. And we're gonna go through that. So the getting started, like I think the simplest thing is having creating your branches. When you create a new Git project, you start with a branch main. And I'll just create that here. We deleted our, our main branch, so you don't have to keep the main branch. You can have whatever branch be the default branch you want. But you'll start with the main branch. And that's how we did start our project for example but we ended up deleting main in favor of our main now like our default branches stage and we also have a branch called production um, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete main so for the purpose of this when you create a git project if you were following this style you create a git project um, you create a new branch called stage and then you make this your default and then delete main that way people don't like I have this habit of just git pull origin main or git pull origin master if you're working in an older repository that has master as their default name. Um, so delete it because if you don't, it could create issues because people can like just uh, by creatures of habit just pulling from main and it could create issues. So you can start and then create a branch called production. And then your two branches would be main, uh, stage and production. So if you are a single developer working on a single project, this could be just enough, or you may want another one called dev or something like that. But, um, you know, so for example, you may want to have another one. Sorry, using Figma here. There we go. Just called like dev. So if you're a single developer, you can get away with, you know, having easily having three branches like this for like a production workflow. Um, but if you're working in teams of multiple people, this is when it gets complicated and you want to make sure you're not overwriting each other. Because if you're a single person, you could just commit to dev and when you're ready, move dev in the stage and then move stage into production. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight uh, stage in a different color to represent that that would be our default. Come on, Figma, you got this. Phil, there we go. It's like a greenish color or something. So now if you're working with multiple people and I'm going to, I'm going to build the branches out here to show you how, how we do it is that in a simple setup um, and we don't have a dev because our dev is pretty much our local host. We have stage and production. Our stage and production are, are built to CI CD workflows that automatically deploy our code to the cloud. We're not going to get into that today, but that's why it's useful to have these these two particular branches. So, so these are like our main branches. These it, it's not it's not okay to work in these branches. So, 
if you have stage in production, the idea is that stage is this branch that nobody works in, that you only create pull requests to. Um, and same thing with production. Like, um, and so in our setup, we only can make pull requests. And I'm going to write the words here just to give some visuals for it. So pull requests. We only make pull requests to stage. Oops. And this is from our personal branches. So in our particular setup, we have personal branches like this. And we just did it real simple. So there's a personal branch for Randy and Bobby and Joe Mar, for example. Right, so all of us just pull requests directly into stage. So if we're working on something, we have our own branches on our local and we just pull, uh, we create pull requests to stage. Um, but we also merge from stage, which I think is important. So in, in our workflow is we're not taking from pulling from production, we're always working against stage no matter what. Um, so this would be like, uh, this is when we like pull origin. This would be like our origin stage, for example. So whenever we're about to make a pull request in the stage, we pull stage to get the latest, to get anybody's latest changes. And, and that's the flow that we follow. Um, and that works pretty well. It works really well for a website. Um, cause in most cases, let's just say that Bobby's working on, um, I don't know, a specific landing page and Jomar is working on the home page. Um, we're not typically overwriting each other in our particular flow. Um, so this works out pretty easy and I think this has been working very well for our team. We've been on this, uh, on this particular, this brand, I think this is five months old, this project. I don't know if it says when it was created, but um this has been working extremely well so i'm looking at github now and this is a open source um so you can see this i'm going to paste that over here you can just click there to look at it and you can see our branches if you click this drop down you can see our branches and we have stage and then we have the production branch here and you can see is our stage is set to default and you you can see the branch names, but the primary branches we have, it, you know, Bobby here, here's Bobby, for example, and Alan, and they're, they're named after us. Now there are some cases where we do create specific branch names on a specific feature. So if, and it's kind of the case where say I have something working in my personal branch that is a project I am just working in, uh, and I don't want to disrupt that project, I will uh, change to stage and then check out a new branch with a specific feature name. So this would be another case here, would be feature name. We are out of the box. Where is a good visual to represent this? Maybe a line like this. That's a nice visual. There we go. So having the feature name, you can pull off stage and still keep your, your branch name clean. So, and then when we, after stage, when things are reviewed in stage, we then go ahead and we make the request down into production. So production's kind of like the holy branch that no one touches. Um, what's cool when you have that is you can set up specific requirements in GitHub to protect the branches. Um, I don't, uh, I think I could look in settings, branches here. So there are branch protection rules available for you in GitHub and you can require a certain uh, approvals to happen before merging. There's certain people you can assign that can make those overrides and approvals. Um, 
and there's a bunch of options that you can pull and you can do that for any of your branches but right now we just have options for uh, branch I mean for production and stage so which is nice to have so when you have these two like this you just kind of have that control and stage for us deploys to a different um, target a different cloud we use Google Cloud Run which is like an elastic container service um, and we have different deployments for each of these this deploys one place this deploys to another and productions tied to you know our www.zestio and stage is tied to our web engine preview URL which we use through Zesty so that's how that that works there I'm just gonna put pull request there Figma people, I think I can throw the wrong way. This way. There you go. Make that a little, little wider. I don't know how to do that. I'm just kind of learning this app. Three. Cool. Make that white. So that's our flow. So now there's a different flow, and I'm going to create another um, setup here. And this is going to be an alternate flow that we have. So right now we're, we're building a new account system. So we have to deal with the fact that we're not actually committing in the stage because stage goes in the production. We don't want to send the stage at this point. And so what we did is we created a new branch called accounts and we have something like this Randy account so we each created new branches because we just keep contributing into it and this cuts down on collision obviously it's the whole point um, but like Randy accounts and I'll just delete these extra So this is one way to do it. Um, this is the way we're doing it now. So we pull into there and then eventually when accounts is complete and ready, we would bring it into stage. After this, so this is a feature branch and like a full feature branch. And it's gonna, it's going to make a significant change to the repository. So when accounts is complete, we will pull it in the stage and then when that's done we'll go back to this workflow we'll go back to contributing the stage because we can make either individual feature request names to update whatever we've made whatever we contributed to this to the actual website project so but for now since we're building out accounts and this doesn't disrupt any of the you know stage production workflow because we're all working in accounts um, and it and you know if it wasn't doing like specific names like this you could also do like feature name like uh, and it's nice when you name it to do something like this accounts profile if you're doing a feature off like towards a specific branch that's how I prefer to do it so you can just cut it so you know and, and when you look like branches get it just gets messy like that's why I you know we used to do and I say used to in some of our production flows when we're building the application we make a feature branch literally for everything we build we don't use the name like my name I don't have a Randy branch on our manager UI for example but we have a ton of feature branches whereas you see like these are all named around most of these are named with the person's name you'll see there's mixed in features in here as well um, but if we were to go look at another repository we have manager UI you'll see like these are all specific they're they're literally named down to the feature you see that feature slash um, so this is another it's a good way to do it too it keeps it clean um, particularly for the app it's nice because say you have like a bug or something like that and you want to switch into um, I don't know, say you're working on feature purge button but then you're like there's there needs to be a hot fix for the drop down scheme overflow so in that case, you would, you know, change back to Matt. I think this has master, this is older repo. You change back to master, you would check out a new branch called hotfix this or that. 
work in that, make that one or two line code change, push that into, or make a pull request into master stage here, and then work that way. And then, then you could change directory back, or not change directory, but change back into your feature branch, pull origin master, and then continue working from there. So that that's just a very, that's the flow that we use in our, for our applications. But for our website, and the topic of this is, you know, for headless website development, I found that this has been really, really nice and smooth. It keeps it clean. It lets you just stay on a single branch and not be like, what branch is I on? It like lets you know the stack you're working on. And if you're working on a very specific thing like this new, like the new accounts thing, uh, new accounts feature we're rolling out, say new accounts application. Hence the benefit of working headless is that why do we have a headless website? So we can build uh, an accounts application in React uh, alongside the website. So this would be the flow here. I don't know, we've got, got a couple people watching now. I don't know if there's any questions here, or any comments. I mean, this is subjective. This is the way we're doing it for the website. Um, you know, the way we do it, I'm going to show the way we do it for, because we just talked about it for the application. For the application, it's like feature drop down or something like that. Make this a little bit smaller. This would be like hot fix. Typo, something like that. And then this could not have a stage, for example, this could just always roll to production. So, but with CICD, having different branches for specific things are definitely, I'd say I definitely suggest you do that. So talk about naming when it comes to the Git branches, like when it comes to pull requests. Um, naming is really important. And something like this, hotfix UI error, this is very ambiguous. And I would not, I mean, I've done this, we're all guilty. We all do it, I do it totally. Uh, but it is helpful to be a little bit more verbose when it comes to naming and that you could have something like hotfix and, and be specific like what was the UI error? It could be UI error, the form input UI error, something like that. It is like gets a little tedious to type out this when you're you know running your, your git commands in the terminal, but it is definitely useful to be more verbose because when I come back over here and I say this is definitely the downfall to um, to this particular setup, to using naming, the downfall of that, the pitfall, I guess, is that if I was to go search for some sort of feature that we added, like, I don't know, DXP page, you can see there's a couple DXP ones here, Joe Mar DXP pages, he made a specific branch for that. So that's good. Now I could like look and be like, oh, what was the change on this? You know, what, this is, you know, an old branch, but you can then look and when you go through your PRs and search through your PRs, you could try, you could look to compare them. So there is some use there. I, I don't, I don't end up doing that. And the way I work with GitHub is I will search, I will search for pull requests. Um, and I search for pull requests to see the commit log and changes on that. Like that's how I, that's my preference again. And like I said, a lot of this is subjective and we're sharing the way that, that it's done through the website but like I would dig directly into a pull request and like look into the changes so that's kind of how I, I go in but if you were to search for a specific if you wanted a feature tied to a branch that's a good time to set up a feature or feature branch for example so we have a question from chat it says um, how do you tie this workflow to a zesty instance and I guess in context to this like zesty has um, there's two ways to consume the Zesty data, and um, Zesty is going to have like draft or version content. Then it has production or published content, right? So this could be like, for example, if you wanted to directly, 
I guess I'll, I'll just rename this here. If this was draft and this was published, it's kind of the same concept. Is um, I'll put that back and I'll just say like, I'll make a little note here, like draft. And what we do for our particular setup is we have we have environment variables that control whether we get um, published or production values from Zesty. And when we do that with EMV values, and the way we set it up actually is if if the EMV value exists, it will load draft version content. If the EMV value is missing, it's always going to learn. Um, create production. Uh, it's always going to pull published data at production. So you can see that here is that um, we have an env.example and we have production faults here. So but it also the way we wrote our ternary like the way we wrote our logic for that is if production will if production's missing a value will always be false no matter what and that that's kind of how how we set that up and it works well you know, with the website with Zesty, considering there's there's either the latest version that's unpublished or the published version, uh, this flow works out really well for us. Thank you for the question. I'm just going to throw this down here like that. Maybe I'll put it up top, actually. Be a little bit cleaner like that. So that's pretty much the gist. If there's any more questions, uh, feel free to ask. If not, that, that was what I was looking to communicate is just showing people the way we we work um, with our different Git flows. Because it is something that, again, it's subjective and people got have personal preferences. But we found that this has been working out very well for the website is the, you know, everybody has their own branch and they pull in. Uh, it's worked out pretty simple. So, um, but again, when we're building the application, we found that having specific features for everything we're building on the app works better in that scenario. So, so that's a wrap for today. Uh, we'll catch you next week on Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care, everybody.